Hey guys, so today you're tuning in for an Asteroids Belt video. Here you see obviously multiple indicators. This bottom one's free volume delta, just search it up. Um, and these two are obviously the premium ones. I'll make a video on the new ones uh, next week. But today we're gonna cover Asteroids Belt. Um, and this video is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, you may have noticed, first of all, that my NAS is not here. That's just because it was like I couldn't get it working with my current setup. I've changed the settings of my OBS a bit. Um, and because the Asteroids Belt video is already delayed, I didn't want to delay it any longer trying to debug the problem and get to recording the video. Um, sorry for the delay. As you guys can see, I've been working on some new stuff and then I've got a few other things planned. Um, so I've been doing a lot of research and if that, those work out, you guys are going to be ecstatic with what's about to come. Uh, but just give me some time. Um, but anyway, let's get right into the video and speak about Asteroids Belt. Um, the thing <clears throat> with Asteroids Belt is it's a very useful tool. But some people will still have questions or may not be using it as effectively as they should. So I'm here to clear up those questions. Um, this is basically the video covering the written guide, but I'll try to break it down a little bit more with my voice and hopefully that will help clear up some confusion. Um, and we'll just talk about things in general about what what can be improved upon with your trading. Um, so let's let's get into it. This video is a little bit more structured. It's a little bit more scripted. So there's going to be things that I have to read first to confirm and if there's cuts along the way I apologize it's just to make sure there's not too many pauses or anything along the way so let's get right into it with asteroids belt there was one key thing that I was actually trying to solve um, and this video by the way won't be focusing on the reversion types I just had this on for the sake of the video uh, so let's just disable the reversion types for now and you know what let's disable these and get to the basics of the belt um, I will add some color to the bodies so you guys can actually have a clue of what's going on you know I'll make it green Make that red, make it easier to see on the screen. Um, by the way, this video should be in 4K. I hope it is. Um, I, that's what I changed my settings for. So if I didn't get to use my Anata and it didn't record in 4K, then it's two L's in one go. Um, so we're going to focus on the main Asteroids Belt. And then the video for the next Asteroids Belt video will be focusing on the reversion types. And you guys can see with it on, it's quite useful. But I want to make sure everyone uses the core belt properly because this is the focus. This part of the belt is everything, in my opinion. This builds well obviously it's my opinion i made the belt <laughs> but this builds upon every other concept of the belt and i really think you guys should make sure you're using this properly and then carry on from there so one thing about the belt and i think is just true for trades in general is context is everything um, we have raging conditions where you can see here where it's pretty much a range and then we broke out of this range a bit these these conditions will change how you should be using the belt and the same is for trends trends will obviously change how you use the belt and the whole point of ranging conditions and trending conditions having different applications will make sense when you realize that context determines everything and you should have a different style of trading for different context so so with trading if you, especially if you're an algo, uh, algo person you might have a algo that does surprisingly well when it's in these kinds of ranges right you might have an algo that does really well on these changes obviously it won't be so straight always uh, sometimes it does happen um, and then you have algos that do better in trends maybe it buys here on a retest of some sort of previous part of the trend when you when you have these algos you'll realize the change in conditions right so if this algo starts performing and makes a lot more money you know we're in a ranging condition and if this algo starts performing you know we're likely trending right not everyone realizes that sometimes you require a different style of trading for a different condition in the market and so when it comes to determining what to do with the belt that's one of the main beauties of the whole belt i made it so it works in all conditions and all types of context and I will explain those and break those down for you. So the two things that the belt was actually made for was like two main things was to work in any context and provide you dynamic support and resistance. And the dynamic support and resistance is true for all contexts, but they work differently based off of what condition you're in. So let's cover this. Hey guys, we are continuing from where we left off. I've recorded this part of the video so many times, but there's so much background noise that it's interrupting the video. So I'm trying to like minimize that as much as possible. Um, this video will have cuts anyway, just purely because I'm trying to make sure the diagrams and explanations are up to standard. So I've made a script, yeah, I've got the diagrams prepared, and I'm just going to make sure all of it's satisfactory. Um, so apologies for the time skip and apologies for all the cuts that you're going to see, but it's best to make sure the video is perfect. 
So we're talking about the two contexts, right? We're talking about the con context of a range and the context of a trend. I've explained this part so many times, I'm actually getting tired of it. Um, in, in both of these contexts, just acknowledge you have to play them different. And that's something that most traders don't realize that they have to do, is play the context different depending on what's, what context you're in. So if you are on a range, you cannot play it the same as a trend and vice versa, you just can't do that. Um, so we're gonna start with a range condition and I think belt encapsulates both perfectly. Um, and I've prepared some diagrams. So with the belt, you have three options or two options with the belt and a third option is just not to trade the range maybe you're a person who prefers trend or maybe you prefer range and you don't trade the trend or maybe you want to learn both and that's why you're here um, whichever you prefer most people prefer trends you know things are just flying upwards it's a lot easier um, but in this case we're trading the range we want to learn how to trade the range so what do you do option a so option a is to play the range and take tps at belt levels because belts are logical srs for if you've read the guide on all the other videos, their logical SR points for how strong a trend is in the context of a range, they are just encapsulating as much of the range as possible with the exceptions of some deviations, but that will also be explained. So you take your trade here, let's say you go long, maybe you're a short trader, maybe you're trying to play from up to down, but let's keep it simple. You're going long here, you take your TP at the belt level resistance and you try to aim for the upper belt. So maybe you take a TP here. If you take 75% off here, you take the remainder off there, right? You move your TP up, you get stopped out. You made you made most of your money, right? You got stopped out, it's fine. So you take another trade, you take TP here, 75%, 25% there, you get stopped out, sure, let's carry on. Or you notice that we're being hugging this resistance for a while and it doesn't look like we're gonna go any higher, especially with this SFP. So you just close your trade and you keep all the profits. And even if you move just stopped up, you still would have kept some profit. Then you try to take another trade on this reclaim, and you see we failed, and you lost one trade. Then you take another trade going up to the belt level resistance, TP, call, same thing again and again. And let's say you've won a total of one, two, not that one, three, maybe four, just not counting all of these little ones. Let's say four or five, you win four or five, you lost one. What, what do you gain from this? So what you gain from this is your probability of win rate. You've increased the amount you will win using the belt and maybe you don't have to use the belt but just as an asteroids belt video in this asteroids belt video you see that each level is providing some sort of support and resistance right when you're in a range you play the support resistance range so in price action obviously you play that range same thing with the belt but the belt is providing you a different form of dynamic support and resistance and you can see how that line is slowly moving down and how price keeps hugging it you see we like slowly angling and then when it's angled down you see how this became pretty much the wick support right that's the advantage of the belt when you're doing price action cool that's good it'll work you use your range the belt is providing you that extra complement in that range of where is the dynamic dynamic support and resistance along that range and so when we flip this resistance here you can see how when it started to angle down it started to capture the wicks right that's the whole point use the belt to give you confluence of the dynamic support and resistance you'll find along the way of the range and tp at the belt levels not at your price action level. now your price action levels work as well of course but you're using astro's belt for a reason because it's doing that for you it's giving you those extra complements that's option a option a is to play the range tp along the way and increase your likelihood to make winning trades knowing the dynamic support and resistance is going to provide you some additional areas of entry and exit make sure you take profits in the range conditions one thing people don't do is take their profits to get a little bit greedy like oh this was the bottom of the range it's perfect this is a generational entry cool oh look at that it's going all the way up nope you just got stopped out because you just decided to hold on like let's say you even didn't get stopped out here you didn't get stopped out here you're still confident boom you got stopped out you've made a negative one trade because you waited this whole period to take one trade I hope you guys can see my mouse otherwise this is awkward you waited this whole period to take one trade and you got stopped out and then you take one winning trade and maybe you get lucky and you finally get tp'd or some something or so on and so forth you made one trade but if you take the range and you tp and you keep yourself safe and this isn't even an aggressive range some ranges are a lot more hard to play um but l l let's say you did it the way where you take profits at the belt you take four or five small trades you keep your profit you keep yourself safe you would have made more wins that way than just taking that one trade and just getting blown the fuck out there's no point of doing that that's option a play the range tp at the belt levels entry at the belt levels they will help you along the way to give you that extra compliment option two 
or option B, I don't know if I said A and B, is to look for ranges where the belt is encapsulating price. And it's not so clear cut because the belt levels are now giving you some indication for where the range is likely to end or where the squeeze in this price is likely to head towards, right? So you gotta look for clues of where the belt is gonna send you the, the next trend to, right? And so that's option B. So option B, what you do is you do the same things, you play the range, you do your best to play the range, but then instead of just doing that or instead of doing even option A at all, you look for what's more likely to be true for this range. Like which direction are we more likely to go? You see the supports are being held, but we don't even reach the bottom support level much. And this should indicate to you that there's actually kind of a bid going on where the fact that we're not reaching the bottom of the belt is some indication that, okay, there's, there's some bid going on here. We can't even reach the back test of this, of this belt anymore. Someone is bidding this up. And keeping that in mind, you see we finally break down a little bit, but then we reclaim. What do we know about deviations? Any reclaim and deviation is but likely to continue to at least the other side, right? It's just, it's that logic of, okay, cool. This is a bearish structure. A failed bearish structure is technically a, a can technically, not always, can technically be a bullish sell. And so if you wanted to use the range to not play it, but then look for clues towards the next trend, you can do that. And then maybe you trust the belt. So you're like, cool, I'm gonna take a, take a dab at this little middle bot, this bottom belt. I'd say still TP along the way, but leave a runner. So if we start a new trend, then you can capitalize on that even slightly and then prepare for the trend by taking trend trades after the fact. So those are your two contexts of the belts, your tr range and trends. And those are the two ways to play the ranges. You take, you play the range, range trade and you start looking for clues of where the range will break. Now, sometimes it's not so clear cut, but with every system, there is some expectation for not winning every single trade. And that's just how it is. But with this in mind, you can play the range and increase your probability of making winning trades. Okay, so let's continue. We've just done ranges, finally, at last. Um, the next thing we're gonna cover is uh, trends, and we're gonna co cover the mistakes made with the coloring system. Uh, people just, they use it wrong, but I understand why. Um, you see red, you wanna short all the time, and fair enough, it will help. And you see green in after a really long red downtrend and you're like cool let me just smash along no that's the biggest mistake people make uh, not just with belt it's not just a belt thing people see trending indicators and they always just they lose their mind a little bit and i understand why fomo we all have it it's, a, it's an emotional game you know even after you've made a billion winning trades you will make a wrong trade out of fomo and it's so frustrating but you just gotta learn to control it so let's cover it when it comes to trending conditions, you need to be aware of color changes and what this color confusion can lead to and why it exists. So why this trend coloring exists in the first place? So the trend coloring exists for two reasons. It's meant to give you just a quick glance of what's going on. You load up your indicator, you're rare, cool, it's red. I'm gonna look for short possibilities. That's your first instance. It's as simple as that. It's to give you a, okay, belt is red we are likely in a downtrend. I'm gonna look for shorting opportunities. That's step one. It's just to give you a quick glance, to give you in your mind, okay, I know what's going on. Ashley Dwell is telling me it's red. I've got to look for downtrends today. I shouldn't just be looking for longs blindly. Now, obviously there are scenarios where you should look for some potential opportunities to mean revert and then potentially play a trend, so on and so forth. You got different context as I've explained, but when you see red and we're trending down, look, for short opportunities and then you're like spaceman why is there green here and why did we not go up that's the other thing the asteroids belt dynamic coloring system is made to give you opportunities to detect potential trend changes so if you are seeing this red and you're looking for shorts and you take your usual short hair then maybe you're like oh shit i've got to exit right now this is green that's not the that's not the point of the belt coloring the belt coloring is there to show you cool we've breached this upper belt that's it doesn't change based off of the breach it can change in between cool we've breached this upper belt what do i need to look for to see a change in trend so it's basically saying listen here's a warning sign we might actually change trend look for potential long opportunities if you're not in the short for some for example or if you're not in your positions yet look for your long opportunity on the failure of this we can continue the downtrend. It's basically that. It's literally showing you, hey, there's a potential for a trend change. 
if it doesn't change, you know more than likely we are likely to be continuing to the the former trend. It's just how it is. So, for failed bullish setups are bearish. Like right, like we see. Alright, cool. We have finally got over this resistance. You're thinking called cool, bullish, but it's if if we've finally after such a long time gotten over resistance and we've just immediately been smacked back down, that is a bearish setup. That's the whole point. It's showing you opportunities of trend change, giving you time to prepare, and then on failure we switch. We switch from looking for longs again back to looking for shorts. It's just that it's giving you that forward warning. Cool. So now let's look at what the belt actually does now how to play this is explaining the guide i'm 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 that, that coloring bit done that's all you need to know it's quick glance cool i'm looking for longs you see look it's gone green cool i'm looking for longs looking for longs. you see that you got your entries you're good and to give you forward warning that cool this might be bearish that's the whole point of the coloring but let's move on from the coloring um i just want to get through this video now i'm getting a little bit uh frustrated with making it um so with with this diagram here i'm, just, I'm here to show you the the logic of the belt one of the main logics of the belt is in any strong trending environment the level of the belt closest to the relevant trend is showing the strength any test of the bottom side of the belt is not a failure of the trend it is showing that trend is still existing and we are still okay for example we've broken down here and what this indicates is now that we've lost the upper belt trend is weakening but we're still trending and you see we've reacted to this level we bounced up trend is still weakening because we touched this middle belt keep that in mind oh boom we fell okay cool we're back in we're back in this should give you some warning signs that trend is weakening that's what the belt is these belt levels provide you trend strength in this trending environment obviously the separate range to the context of the ranging environment in the trending environment we should be looking to understand that if we start entering the belt too much we are likely waning the trend and the trend is starting to get a little bit exhausted but any tap of the bottom belt isn't necessarily the end of a trend the trend could still be continuing it's just weaker than it was before and it's just showing this is the bare minimum that the belt has to protect to continue the trend as soon as belt gives way on this bottom level that's when you know cool trend has ended we need to start looking for shorts like or we just at least need to play cautiously if we're in a like bull market you're not going to just initially start shorting straight away you start playing a little bit more cautiously until this trend starts to resume that's basically it so let's look at an example of where the belt it's the same place it's just further on in the chart belt actually failed so as explained strong trend strong trend and you see we start massively pulling away right we tap the middle belt still on a trending environment but it's weaker tap the middle belt again so the trending environment is weaker tap the middle belt again we go above we close back below an sfp and we're at resistance on this point here this should be the clue that you need that okay this trend is definitely weakening technically even though it's red it's giving you that heads up the belt's there saying yo listen this is a sign of a likely potential downtrend there's some there's some indications that trend is changing remember it's meant to give you a quick glance and let you know okay cool the belts detected some potential trend change maybe i have to start looking for shorts maybe you shorted the test of the upper belt but let's say you know you believe okay maybe it might go back but then you see this massive down candle that could have been your short entry right that could have given you some confidence or you see this breakdown and this failure to hold this belt so you see we we held and we immediately break down remember anything that's a failed bullish setup is bearish not always but in some situations yeah like cool we've been trending we've been trending we're starting to see some weakness asteroids belt is saying yo there's some bearish setups like keep that in mind oh cool it's long wick there's a lot of demand for this trend to continue immediately shot back down that's your bearish entry that's your that's your indication that we might have a strong downtrend maybe it's not guaranteed there's no guarantee in trading you've got to keep that in mind you play what you know so obviously to improve your setup potential you've got to understand that you should use lower time frame for entry if you want to keep it safe um if you want to trade th like just this chart you can but if you want to keep it safe to prevent any type of reversal or keep an eye on where you are on the chart use multi time frame i explain that in the guide the guide is beautiful for the multi time frame explanation that's got diagrams and everything please use reference the guide it's going to be linked in the below description below but this is just an example of showing you how all of these pieces came together right you saw a strong trend color detection showing waning like like cool this might be a break in trend 
it's it was red before we started to break down you see that this tap of the middle belt shows cool there's support there's still trending still trending but weakening trend and then we broke down these parts came together do you see that you see how these parts piece themselves together and that's my point the belt was made to work in every environment and then as we broke down you can see here this is where we broke down you can see how how much further this these all parts link together did you see that i hope you guys thought that i genuinely thought that was really awesome when it happened um these parts you can see how it led to quite a strong trend right and then you see it again you see cool the strong trend continued down we broke in and immediately you can tell how this can show a weakening trend and this is why asteroids belt is like yo this trend is weakening there is some potential for a trend change immediately at that potential for trend change you see we got shot back down this once again provided support because asteroids belt levels are support and resistance that is the key it is support and resistance but this failure to hold the support should have been a clear signal in your head that once again we are in a bearish territory we've started to trend down in a quite an aggressive way and any sign of a bullish flip in in price action was met with such a rejection that it should have been a warning sign in your head cool i'm gonna look for look for resistance entries and you saw cool middle belt was resistance middle belt was resistance but if you want to keep it safe you enter at the upper belt why because in, a, in any trending environment if this is the minimum that price has to hold for trend to continue then you know this is the safest entry because any break point above that would lead to a change in environment right but because the minimum point for the belt in a downtrend is using the uppermost belt you short the uppermost belt so that's the way to play it safe i explained that in the guide as well that's something that i want to actually break into more in an uptrend the bottom belt is your minimum in a downtrend your top belt is your minimum and so if you want to keep it safe you play those you play the minimum like okay cool i want to get an entry at the absolute minimum and i'll, I'll explain that now when when you guys are actually i was going to explain this later but you know i'll go i'll go into it now let's explain this positioning towards the edge there should be drawing tools on this right yes drawing tools perfect so when you guys are positioning for your trades right one thing i always recommend with the belt if you don't know what you're doing is positioning towards the minimum point of holding i always recommend that because it's safer that way but how do you position so you don't lose any opportunity you layer your bids and you get close when you get closer you start getting them tighter and tighter and they put your stop let's say this is your stop like potential stop area you think you're invalidated above this point this is just an example you layer your bids close to your invalidation and why is it so it allows for some deviation but you get some fill if we let's say we stopped at this strong trend area you got a small partial fill here and you get to play the trend to some extent you don't miss out the trade but as the belt gets closer to your invalidation your fill gets better and your average your average entry point is closest to your invalidation so when you get stopped out you don't get fucked because your 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 entry points here your entry point as you're scaling in towards your invalidation so like there may be a lot more stacked bids limits here right you just stack your limits here and have them wider as you go down your 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 average is no longer here your average is around here or your average is around here so it's not as painful if you got stopped out but if you don't get stopped out you've got a max filled position and we start continuing down now i would say for your average beginner stack your bids towards the top belt level and just keep your stop and if you're a little bit better than that you can account for some deviations and stack some more bids closer to your stop loss that's just my opinion you know you guys can experiment as you please i am only the guy who made it of course um yeah i don't want to save any of that but yeah that's how you should position like if you want to start to understand how to position yourself that is the best way scale closer to your invalidation especially if you're playing a high time frame. if you're playing low time frame it might be a little bit harder um sometimes to like very quickly absorb all that data and that's why i use multi time frame because i'm like cool i'm at a one hour resistance the five hours showing weakness i could take this trade i'm not like trying to be that guy who just trades the one minute chart i think that's people who do that are crazy i rate them they're powerful as shit <laughs> um, but yeah that's that's basically it scale towards your invalidation that's the best piece of advice i can give you okay so we are continuing with the last bit of this video and you're wondering why am i in ms paint well that's because i i have a new computer and i haven't got photoshop in this one yet 
Um, and I haven't been bothered to download Photoshop because I haven't needed it. So clearly I'm underprepared for this video. This video is all over the place, but I hope you guys find it in, like stimulating to understand how the belt works and the coloring and how the belt levels line up to a trend and all that stuff. I hope that helped. But I'm going to use paint because I needed somewhere to draw to explain the final part of the belt, which is multi-time frame analysis and lineups. So what the fuck are lineups? I keep talking about it. Sometimes I tweet about it and people like, I don't know, some people don't take the trade. I'm like, it's such an easy trade. Um, and let's say belt is on the 30 minute doing a little bit of this. It's going down. And at the five minute, it was doing this. It's going up. This is an example of a potential lineup, and then it starts trending down like eventually, right? Now you might see that this isn't a perfect lineup, and the reason I'm showing this as an example is because it doesn't have to be perfect, right? This is just an example, like a, like a pure like just looking at it, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. Let's say price is we're gonna do this. I'm gonna keep it green so it's easy to understand. Okay, cool. We're trending upwards on the five minute. We have the thirty minute belt. A little bit of a deviation, explaining the deviation as well as explaining lineups. And then we start seeing this. And then we break down here. Let me see this. We see the breakdown into the five minute belt. We see it pump up again. And we see this failure. And then we know that the 30 minute belt is down trending. Right? Boom. This is your lineup. These parts here. And even if you're brave enough, you can enter here. These are your potential entries for a lineup trade now what is a lineup now lineup keeping it simple is mainly the focus on this bit and the reason for that is in a 30 minute belt right if the trend is down and the five minute is down and the five minute support became resistance so this bit here became resistance and the 30 minute belt resistance held on the 30 minute buy will look like a wick above so it'll have this like nice little thing where it's like it looks like a full candle here and it's like a wick like this and it held then you are in a position a unique it doesn't always happen but this is why I included this bit here but it doesn't always happen you want a unique position where the five minute trend has upward trend because you know within different time frames you'll have like pretty much a small market cycle where you see okay cool we're trending on a five minute but the one hour is still awful looking focus on the one hour but use the five minute for your entry and that's why i'm showing this um you're in a unique position where your five minute is now back to down trending and agreeing with your high time frame analysis but not only that your dynamic support and resistance is saying yo this is a uh, this is resistance this is failure this is highlighting absolute failure take that position you are more than likely to win it because your lower time frame your higher time frame are all saying at this moment in time we can't hold the sustained trend of the lower time frame your higher time frame resistance was correct and your lower time frame is starting to correct and agree with you so that's why i included this little bit of an overshoot because it does happen this is more likely than this this happens sometimes and this is like a beautiful opportunity to make sure you take that trade not always this isn't like yo guys always take this trade but I mean, I almost do, almost always, and it works so many times, and I've tweeted it a billion times, and I don't know why people don't listen to me. <laughs> um, but take this trade. It will it will do well, because you have the complements of multiple time frames, multiple belts on the resistance and support. So it's not just your price section. It's not just your asteroids belt on the one time frame. It's your asteroids belt saying on multiple time frames that this is resistance, and this is a trend, and this is going to go down. You follow the trend. But on this case, it is still a potential for lineup. So this isn't a exact lineup. I wouldn't consider this a perfect, per, perfect. I'm trying to say perfect. I was trying to say proper at the same time. Perfect lineup. But this is warning signs. This is showing, cool, your 30 minute is down. On the five minute bar, it looks up. On the 30 minute, it might be a wick. Maybe even it deviates a little bit and it closes like this and the wick's like that. On the five minute, oh cool, the five minute momentum is starting to die. We know that deviations do happen, it's just happen, it does happen. I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive and start putting fills and layering bids. Do you remember I mentioned layering bids? Closest to my invalidation, which is here. So you know I'm putting my invalidation in. I chose the colors for this awfully, by the way. Uh, closest to my invalidation here, so stop loss. I'm going to start layering bids closest to my invalidation. Oh shit. Okay, cool, I got my fill. Oh damn, 30 minute support, technically, because we're above it, right, on the 5 minute. Okay, cool, 5 minute resistance held, and I got slightly higher fill, because this was slightly higher than this one. 
now that you've gotten your fills, as the five minute starts to break down and it starts maybe to exhibit a strong downtrend, you've just gotten your aggressive position and managed to capitalize on a better fill point than waiting for them, waiting for the lineup. Because sometimes lineups don't happen to that degree. They do happen and when they do, once again, they are beautiful. But when they start to line up, start layering bids closest to your validation. Your five minute invalidation, your 30 minute belt execution, it, it's going to give you that opportunity to play a 30 minute downtrend with a five minute execution point. And I think that is so heavily misunderstood. I hope this cleared it up. I don't know a better way to explain this. Maybe I'll dedicate a video to just lineups. Maybe I'll make a video with just me trading lineups. But this is the best way to explain it. It's literally on Evans Paint, so I apologize. But I'm thinking of maybe I'll just buy like a £2,000 tablet and just fucking draw in it for you guys, um, which would be better than using a mouse and keyboard. Um, but legit, like, there are those. No, maybe not 2000 maybe that's a bit too expensive. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, the, buy like a fucking tablet and just draw on that. I think it might help. Um, what, which one are those? Those Wacom, the ones with the screens on it. I don't know if you guys know what I'm even talking about. But anyway, use fucking these. Use the lineups. They help so much and they work so well. And I think they're severely misunderstood. And I hope they this explanation was helpful. And yeah, that's, that's basically the whole video. That is the whole video. That is covering ranges covering the coloring trend changes, covering the fucking lineup situation with the multi-time frame analysis. There's the written guide. I hope this video covers everything besides the reversion system. So the reversion system where the belt is like, they've got these standard deviations applied of average extension. So they're, they're not just random like numbers. They are literally calculated by the belt. This is your belt. This is your reversion system. That will be explained next week. Or the week after because i might have to make the double print singularity video first but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed hope you found it fun i hope you found it informative and i will see you guys next time bye